But uh, with that, we're going to invite um, Greg Hyatt, who's the Vice President of Machining Technology with Maury Seiki. And so, uh, come, you can welcome to Maury. Thank you, Phil. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to uh, be here today and to talk about one of my favorite subjects, uh, a case study uh, for a, a successful and uh, rapid uh, launch of uh, disruptive technology. Uh, this one's fun to talk about because not all of the examples have been successful. Um, many of them have taken much longer than we wished, uh, and it's tragic when we have uh, an exciting new idea and we may waste half of the life of patent protection uh, getting it to market. Uh, but this is an example of one that proceeded very well, and I'll talk a little about why it proceeded well and why it was as successful as it was. And, um, uh, and, and this is one of uh, a portfolio uh, we're developing, because when uh, Dr. Mori charged me to uh, start a new development team uh, eight years ago, we specifically targeted um, the disruptive opportunities, because we felt that in a very mature uh, industry like ours, the uh, exciting breakthroughs that we could pursue unilaterally had probably already come and gone. And the exciting breakthroughs for our cutting tool partners had come and gone. And uh, on the control side as well. Um, and the breakthrough opportunities were going to be in, in reinventing the macro system. So there might be some completely new cutting tool which would require new machine tool features to control and support and new programming solutions uh, to develop toolpath for. So our developments are typically joint developments. We pick, uh, we first of all try to pick the right challenges. Uh, we look for customers' problems that haven't been addressed for decades, uh, where they're still struggling with some of the same solutions they had long ago and have not enjoyed uh, significant productivity improvements. Uh, and then we try to find the right partners uh, with whom uh, we can pursue solutions. In this case, uh, the collaborators were Sandvik Coromat, a uh, global leader in cutting tools, Ourselves, DMG Moriseki, uh, global leader in machine tools, and Siemens PLM, uh, global leader in CN controls and uh, programming and simulation. Uh, and as I go through, you'll see why all three of these parties were essential, and no one of these entities could have pursued this innovation uh, on their own. Um, the, uh, the focus is on gear cutting, and uh, for the, the problem statement for the three collaborators is that uh, we had the opportunity to increase market share. Uh, we all participated in this market, but none of us had an overwhelming market share. Um, for our customers, uh, the problem was stagnation and productivity, uh, typically low single digits per year. So we had a very stable uh, manufacturing process, which was changing very gradually. Um, and um, none of our investors are, are happy with that situation. So when we think we know which industries to anticipate exciting innovations from, I have to plead guilty that, that my industry is not one of those. Uh, in the upper right, we see the first known depiction of a machine tool. We're a machine tool builder. That one was carved on uh, the wall of one of the Pharaoh's tombs in uh, Middle Kingdom, Egypt. Um, we see one of Leonardo da Vinci's designs about 4,000, 3,000 years later. That's not that much different. And we've continued developing on about the same uh, development uh, path since then. Um, and as I said, we're going to talk about gear production. This is one of the more mature applications for our machine tools and, and cutting tools. Uh, gear design stabilized very early in the Industrial Revolution, and it had to. The Industrial Revolution wouldn't have happened without some maturity uh, in gear design. Um, but because gear design has not changed dramatically since then, uh, it wasn't essential for the production techniques to change dramatically. Uh, so here we see a hobbing process, which is the process by which gears are typically produced. Uh, we use a very complex cutting tool, uh, which is ground specifically uh, for pretty much the gear that's going to be produced. So uh, a single hobbing tool can cut a very narrow range of different gear types. Um, so we have a very simple tool path uh, with a very complex tool. Uh, and of course, this enabled the production of sophisticated gears uh, long before CNC control and computer control of machine tools. Um, and the old hobbing machines had gear trains, as you see in the upper left there, that uh, synchronized the rotation of the tool with the rotation of the workpiece. Um, as we've implemented uh, CNC control on the machine, we've replaced that gear train with a computer, so there was some cost reduction but the process was still constrained by the cutting tool. So we really couldn't leverage the CNC control to do other, anything other than mimic uh, the gear train that had historically been used. 
So all three of the collaborators uh, independently recognized the potential for uh, market penetration in this uh, area. Uh, all three had independently made some efforts to do so with some success, but all three had been constrained by the existing hobbing process. Uh, we at Moriseki couldn't really leverage the flexibility of our machines to improve the process because we were still using the same tools and the same uh, method. Um, uh, Siemens PLM couldn't utilize the, the power of their programming systems and, uh, to improve the process. And the cutting tool manufacturers were making tools very much like the ones that they delivered to customers 60 years ago. Um, when we observe disruptive innovations, they're the ones that not only provide uh, an improvement in technology, productivity, um, but uh, the disruptions or the innovation is of such a magnitude that the same suppliers don't end up providing the solution. So for example, as we made the transition from sailing ships to steamships, it wasn't the people who had been building the best sailing, sailing ships who uh, supported the transition to steamships. Uh, likewise, the companies that provide uh, diesel electric locomotives for the railroad industry weren't the same ones who provided the best uh, steam engines. Usually it's not in the best interest of the market leader to introduce a disruptive technology. Uh, their interest is in maintaining the status quo. So the disruptions typically come from uh, outside the industry and um, in this case, the three collaborators all found uh, disruption to be uh, desirable. So we had um, enough market share to understand the market and appreciate it, uh, but a small enough market share to be interested in uh, uh, pursuing a disruption. Um, so the disruptive innovation we call uh, Envomil. Um, it was originally conceived by Sandvik and the first uh, method claims for the patents were drawn up by them. And in this case, uh, the very complex intelligent hobbing tools replaced with a very, very simple cutting tool. And the tool path is complex rather than the cutting tool being complex. So we can use a single cutting tool to produce uh, hundreds and hundreds of different gear designs. And in fact, we can cover uh, with only three cutting tools, uh, gears that vary in diameter from an inch to 60 inches. So um, a huge range of spur and helical gears can be produced with a very limited inventory uh, of cutting tools. So the special machine is replaced by a relatively standard CNC machine. Um, uh, these machines are built in uh, much higher volume than the special hobbing machines. So as the machines are built in, in a volume that's orders of magnitude higher, we can amortize the development cost over a larger volume of machines. Uh, we have all the efficiencies of higher volume production, so we can actually provide a more flexible and powerful machine at a much lower price uh, than the dedicated special machines. And we can consolidate the various operations, where the hobbing machine only cut the gear profile and other machines before it and after it uh, blanked the gear out of bar stock, um, produced an ID bore, uh, broached uh, a keyway or uh, a spline in the gear, and the gear went from one operation to another, typically through seven or eight operations uh, with many setups, a lot of work in process in the factory, a very unresponsive uh, manufacturing process. Uh, we now are consolidating the gear cutting into the same machine that's doing the blanking, the turning, the boring, um, broaching of keyways, et cetera, all in, into a single operation. So the value proposition for the collaborators is net growth into a new market without cannibalizing uh, existing products. Um, some synergies with the existing products, because there are certain types of gears that the new solution can't address, so we can still leverage our uh, prior art solutions. Uh, the investment required wasn't excessive because we had enough exposure to this industry, enough experts in the industry, that we had the personnel on staff uh, to develop the solutions. Uh, more importantly for the customers, the value proposition was the more uh, responsive manufacturing process, uh, due to the integration of operations, because especially for a lower volume production of gears, we, we tend to associate gears with automotive transmissions and the very high volume uh, applications, but in fact, uh, the majority of gear value produced is for the lower volume uh, applications for all kinds of industrial equipment. Um, so most gears are, are manufactured in batches of five to 50. And in that case, there's a tremendous amount of setup time. Typically, it takes longer to set the machine up than to run out the uh, production batch. So machine utilization tends to be very low. Um, so by consolidating these operations, reducing the number of setups, 
Uh, we can greatly reduce operator intervention, uh, the cost of labor, and dramatically increase utilization of the machine tools. Um, we eliminate the special tooling. Uh, many of our customers who uh, produce a wide variety of gears have inventories of hobbing tools that run into the millions of dollars. And just managing those tooling inventories, keeping track of which tools are nearly expired and dull, uh, which ones still have uh, enough tool life to perhaps cut 20 or 50 more gears is extremely complex. And by using a very simple tool that may be common to a, a wide variety of parts, they have uh, uh, dramatically reduced uh, inventory and cutting tools. Uh, we realized there were a couple of uh, critical uh, impediments to enabling the launch of these tools. Um, and we realized that in order to accelerate the launch, we had to address these and create some uh, enabling technology in parallel to development of the tool and the method itself. Um, and uh, Siemens was critical in developing the programming solutions, which was particularly problematic because, as I mentioned, gear design hasn't been changing quickly. So many of the gears currently in production were drawn on paper. Uh, there are no CAD models. Um, some of those that, uh, for which there are electronic models are still in 2D. Uh, of those that have been solid modeled, uh, many do not have an accurate solid for the gear flank. Uh, typically, there's a note in the corner of the drawing that the gear flank is for illustrating purposes only because the designers of the gears thought that they knew the gear would be produced on a hobbing machine where the profile of the hob would term, determine the geometry of the gear flank, um, and the manufacturer could not actually use the geometry in his solid model to uh, generate a program or cut the part. Um, so we had to create uh, a programming solution that would allow us to input the parameters for the gear, the number of teeth, the pressure angle, uh, the helix angle, and reverse engineer the surface of the gear. Uh, and then create our tool path from this, the surface that we had reverse engineered. So this actually creates an opportunity for us to reverse the normal flow um, where the customer doesn't have an accurate solid model or a solid model at all. We start with the cam side using cam to reverse engineer uh, the gear surface and then can use that to create a solid model, an accurate solid model, so the flow is not from CAD to cam but from cam to CAD. Uh, another major impediment was just training uh, our internal staff and our sales channel to support the process um, because it's radically different from the hobbing processes we had uh, previously commercialized on our machines. Uh, so we put together a process where we would train the trainers and we brought in uh, technical staff from our five regional technical centers, uh, trained them in our Chicago headquarters, uh, and then sent them out to the five regional offices to train uh, the engineers in the 33 sales offices around the country and are pursuing a, a parallel process uh, in Europe and in Asia. So um, we have uh, the tooling, the machine tool, CAD CAM CNC all uh, collaborating to come up with a solution that can be supported by a single source. In this case, it's Moriseki. Uh, offering the machine tool, the Sandvik cutting tools, and uh, the Siemens uh, programming system. Uh, because, of course, one of the problems we'd observed in previous launches is that it, it couldn't possibly succeed if we offer a new process and then wish our customer the best of luck in finding some way to program it or finding one, someone who can supply cutting tools for it. We have to have a complete solution. Um, as I mentioned, one of the critical elements was uh, developing uh, a system to prepare the tool path even when the CAD models uh, were not available. Um, however, we can still leverage, as I mentioned, the legacy solutions, uh, for example, for the spiral bevel gears such as this one, where the new process doesn't work. Uh, here we can use a ball nose end mill, and when the customer has a solid model, uh, create the tool path directly from that solid model in the more conventional way. Uh, this shows a, a shot of the digital manufacturing uh, solution center we put together in our Chicago uh, headquarters with Siemens. Uh, and here we have a number of workstations uh, on which we have loaded the appropriate software to go from CAD to CAM to the CNC, uh, the complete uh, process. And these are wired in to the machines that are on the floor. We have a, a few dozen of our most popular machine models there. And they're hardwired to the coordinate measuring machines so we can create the programs here uh, for cutting the parts and for inspecting the parts, can transfer those directly to the machine tools and to uh, the inspection equipment, and then can return uh, the results back to the workstations. 
So we have a, a complete uh, process flow from uh, CAD to CAM, or in some cases CAM to CAD, uh, have integrated, um, uh, for example, tool presetters to support uh, uh, history of uh, the cutting tools and data on the cutting tools management of uh, tool length, diameter, and so forth, and integration uh, of the inspection process. Um, so the ultimate value proposition is we've replaced the high-speed steel cutting tools of 60-year-old design with advanced coated carbide tools. Um, we've incorporated all the other operations in the production of the gear. Uh, with the sole exception of heat treat, uh, there are many gears which require surface hardening. Uh, and in that case, the gear has to leave our machine after the anneal state machining, uh, go to the surface hardening operation to those furnaces or induction coils and then return to our machine for being finished. Um, uh, perhaps a year from now, I'll be able to describe a new heat treating process we have under development, which will let us do the heat treating in our machine as well. So then even for the surface hardened gears, uh, we can cut the gear complete. Um, uh, incorporating the other operations to reduce uh, uh, labor cost and improve machine utilization. Um, eliminating the cost of the special tooling, uh, replacing the standard machine or the special machine with the standard, allowing uh, the maintenance personnel and our customers to have a single platform they have to support instead of having to learn uh, many different machine tool platforms with different sets of spare parts, different repair procedures, different operation and, and programming procedures. Um, and of course, more flexibility. Um, because we can consolidate the operations, uh, and now we have a means of uh, creating uh, the tool path uh, in a CAM system. Uh, so the ultimate results are uh, the innovation has been demonstrated at uh, some gear-specific exhibitions where it was very well received. There's been a great deal of excitement in the industry. Uh, we've accepted orders for the first machines. They're being built uh, as we speak and will be installed in the next couple of months. Um, we started our first uh, informal dialogue with Sandvik on this subject about 15 months ago. So by the time uh, this has been underway for 18 months, we will have realized the first profit. So the time from brainstorming to profit is gonna be right at a year and a half, uh, which for our industry is spectacular, and why I selected this rather than some other examples to share with you. Um, thank you. So.